Hello everybody. Uh, this is my first time doing this for us now that we are starting our new pilot group working towards beginning new cells and multiplying cells and so forth. So um, I'm trying to get in the habit of this for the last few weeks. Cassidy and I led the pilot cell trying to demonstrate how a cell is led. And as you remember from our retreat and from what we've been saying, the purpose of, of the cell is making disciples and we focus on actually applying the scripture through the study of the cell. So the purpose of the, the cell study is not to say tear into the scriptures and get lessons and uh, learn all these different doctrines and so forth. It's about application to our lives. And so it's like supposed to be a complement to the teaching of the church. So you have a teaching time and then you actually have a time where you're just interacting with the scripture and saying, what is this scripture saying to me and what am I going to do about it this week? And actually everyone considering what God is telling you to do through the scripture rather than uh, just reading the scripture and trying to learn interesting things. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a kind of a two hands. So there's going to be teaching on one hand and there's going to be application on the other hand. And so I'm trying to get started on the teaching. I'm going to try to be faithful with doing this on videos because I think this is a good way to do it for now, especially uh, since we are not going to be starting celebrations for a while. Uh, but this will give us an opportunity to, you know, get a little bit of a study and teaching time on the scripture. So the first scriptures we are going to be looking at now that we have finished uh, this last study as and now we're starting on this new pilot group is we're looking at first and second Thessalonians uh, I wanted to give you an intro today to first Thessalonians particularly because that's what we're going to be doing so I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about the book now first of all if you read verse 1 it says Paul Silas and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica. So this was written not just by Paul, but Paul, Silas, and Timothy. And why these three guys? Well, that's because Paul, Silas, and Timothy are actually the three guys who planted the church in Thessalonica. They were traveling on uh, what we call Paul's second missionary journey. They were traveling together. They were working together. And they had come in and they had spent, well, Paul had spent three Sabbaths. It says it in the book of Acts that Paul spent three Sabbaths in the book, in the city of Thessalonica. And, um, and during those three Sabbaths, he was reasoning with the Jews in the, um, in the synagogues. And then things got stirred up. People got mad at him and they wanted to run him out of town. So Paul was run out of town, and it says this in Acts chapter 17, which is what I'm trying to turn to here uh, to show you. Acts chapter 17, verse 10. Um, it says, because Paul had been in Thessalonica, and it says, as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. And so Paul and Silas were sent out, and it's possible that Timothy got to stay. We're not really totally sure on all of that but Paul and Silas were run out of Thessalonica because of problems that had been stirred up so an interesting thing when we're looking at uh, books like Thessalonians that are epistles from Paul and uh, his co-workers we tend to also look at the book of Acts to try to see uh, what's the context of this letter what's going on and so Paul had been in Thessalonica for three Sabbaths explaining and he was proving that Jesus was the Messiah and that he had to suffer and they were upset so they ran him out of town and it went to Berea uh, and it says an interesting thing in verse 11 of Acts chapter 17 it says the Berean Jews were more noble in character than those in Thessalonica for they received the message with eagerness and they examined the scriptures to see if what Paul said was true so um we see that Paul had gone to Berea, and then it says this. It says in verse 13, When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, some of them went there too, agitating crowds and stirring them up. The believers immediately sent Paul to the coast. But Silas and Timothy, okay, so now Timothy is in Berea at this point, stayed in Berea. Those 
who escorted Paul, brought him to Athens, and then left him with instructions, and then he left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. So he got run out of Thessalonica. He got run out of Berea because the Thessalonians came there, even though the people from Berea were actually listening and they were they were studying the scriptures to see if what he said was true. And then he got sent to Athens. And if you keep following the book of Acts chapter 17, Paul was in Athens. And then in verse 18, it says Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And so it's basically understood that it was during the time that Paul was in Corinth that he wrote this letter back to those believers in Thessalonica. He was not in Athens very long either, but he did spend a, a longer period of time in Corinth. And so um, we see this in Acts chapter 18. Paul was in Corinth and it says that he sent um, Timothy back to um, Thessalonica. So chapter 18, Paul is in Corinth writing his letter to the Thessalonians. We get this actually even confirmed from early church writers in the second century. They were saying, yeah, Paul was in, in Corinth when he wrote uh, Thessalonians. And it's very interesting that because we know this from looking at the book of Acts, we know that Paul was in, uh, in Corinth. He mentions in chapter 18, well, Luke mentions, it says, while Gallio was the proconsul, the Jews in Corinth made a united attack on Paul. So we know who the governor was or who the proconsul was while Paul was in Corinth during the time that he wrote the letter. Okay, now you got to put all these pieces together. We know Paul was in Corinth because Acts tells us, and we know he's interacting with the Thessalonians. He's writing back. He's sending Timothy back. And we know who the proconsul was, the Roman proconsul, during the time that he was in Corinth. Now, what this does is this allows us to know when exactly the book of 1 Thessalonians was written. And it's really interesting because we have pretty conclusive evidence that the book of 1 Thessalonians was written in about the year 51. I say about because calendars have changed and so forth uh, over time. And, and you know, so there's a little bit of going there. But what we would call the year 51. Now, that makes this the very first epistle written by Paul to be included in the New Testament. And so we know pretty conclusively Paul wrote this during his time in Corinth. We know who the governor was during that time. And here's an interesting thing. Because of archaeology, there are inscriptions in other parts of Greece that tell us that Gallio was the proconsul during the year 51 and 52. So we know when Gallio was the proconsul because of archaeological, archaeological inscriptions. And so we can put these things together and we know almost 100% for sure that this is when this book was written. Now, I just said that that makes this the first book uh, or the first epistle that Paul wrote that is included in the New Testament. Um, now, there is some speculation that maybe Galatians was written first. However, with Galatians, we don't have such firm evidence of what year it was written. And so there are some people who think it was written a little bit earlier, some people who think it was written, written a little bit later. Uh, so Galatians could have come first, but we're not sure. But we are sure when Thessalonians was written, making this, if not the first then the second um, letter that he wrote that is included in the New Testament. So it's kind of at the beginning of his writing ministry, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this now, because we actually would just finish Titus and Philemon that he was writing near the end of his, of his life. Remember in Philemon, he says, I'm an old man now. Well, he's a young man at this point. He's still kind of new at this in a way. I mean, it's a second, so he's second missionary journey, so he's experienced, but he's he, it's on the front end 
of the ministry and what's going on. Um, and so it, you kind of get maybe a little different feel when someone's kind of on the earlier years of their ministry versus the later years. Now, I said to year 51, what year was Jesus crucified and rose from the dead? Again, we're not totally like we can't like exact it to the year 33, but 33 is the year we say because if if Jesus was born in year zero and the Bible tells us he lived 33 years, then we would say the year 33. Now, like I said, calendars have changed over time and they had to take days in and out. And so it could be anywhere from, let's say, 32 to 35. But 32 to 35 to 51 is not much time. So that means that the gospel has spread all the way from Israel all the way over to Greece and is basically stirring up the whole world. And we're talking about in less than 20 years time. And we see uh, that there are doctrinal questions that they have that they would have never had an opportunity to know because this is still new, new stuff. And so Paul is writing very early on. And this also tells us that the story of Jesus is not something that was made up years later. Uh, that's something common you hear today is like, well, the church invented all these doctrines in the year uh, 300 and something at the council of something or there's like, no, Paul was writing this less than 20 years after the resurrection. And if you remember, Paul had been one of the biggest persecutors of the church. And so Paul's been a Christian very little time, maybe, maybe 10 years at this point. Um, so Paul is writing to this church. I told you he was only there three Sabbaths, three Sabbaths. That's three weeks. And so we don't, we don't know. We know he sent Timothy back at least some of the time, uh, but they didn't have a lot of interaction with Paul before he was out. So this church in a way was kind of on their own. They didn't have outside help. So Paul is writing to them to help them. And an interesting thing about Thessalonians is, is as we look at the book of Thessalonians, we find that the church in Thessalonica was actually a very strong, very healthy church. They were encountering quite a bit of persecution and yet they were standing firm despite the fact that Paul had only spent three weeks with them. So that's something to be uh, impressed with and amazed about. And so Paul was there a short time. He's writing there to help them and to encourage them. So that brings me to what are the main themes of, of these letters? Well, the main theme right off is that he is talking to them about remaining faithful. And he's giving them praise. He's saying, wow, you guys are doing a great job. You guys are facing persecution and you're standing strong. So he's praising them. He's encouraging them. He's trying to give them advice on how to live a godly life because he hasn't been there to teach them. So he's trying to help them know how to live godly lives. And from what we see, they're taking it to heart and they're trying to live out the gospel implications in their life. So the main theme that we see is that he is encouraging them and he is praising them for their faithfulness in times of persecution and helping them know how to live a godly life in these situations. The second main theme is this, what we call in seminary terms, eschatology or study of the end times. So really, if you want to know what Paul says about the end times, where you're going to look is first and second Thessalonians. And the reason is because the church was facing so much persecution, what hope did they have? And the hope that Paul is expressing to them is that, yes, you're struggling, you're in this difficult time, but Christ has promised to return. He is coming with victory. You are not fighting a losing battle. Christ has won and he is coming as the triumphant king. So this is a form of encouragement, but this is where we get a lot of understanding of what Paul teaches about the end times. And um, another thing that goes in there is they're wanting to know, okay, well, if Jesus is coming back, what about the people who die now? Uh, what about them? Like we understand, okay, yeah, Jesus is going to come back, but what about the people who die before Jesus comes back? 
And so he's actually discussing that. And so the second coming is discussed all throughout First and Second Thessalonians. So what we see, Paul spent little time in this church, yet this church had become a powerful, healthy church and is standing strong despite persecution. Paul is writing to encourage them, help them to know how they should continue living, and to offer them the hope, the encouragement that Christ is coming again and letting them know about how things work between the time that we're in, between the time of Jesus, you know, making his promises and resurrecting and Jesus actually coming again. So I hope this helps you as we are going in. I'm going to make another video talking with some teaching on um, Ephesians, uh, sorry, Thessalonians chapter one uh, that I'll be sending before Sunday so that you can then be using that for your application. So thank you for listening and I look forward to being with you and uh, God bless you all. Lord, we just ask that you would make the scriptures come alive to us as we study them together and help us to apply them to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.